Good afternoon, everyone. Taiwan 6.0 earthquake, but notice where it matches right over the volcano offshore Ilan. Well known spot of the tip of a stratovolcano. Really interesting how a typhoon is coming over this area. Is it an electrical earth spot connection? Immediately after the earthquake, jumped onto a webcam to look to see if there was any visible water vapor coming from the underwater volcanic eruption. The typhoon's inbound, so it's not too clear from that distance, but unusual three typhoons over the Western Pacific. And as Typhoon Likima makes landfall tomorrow in northern Taiwan, I'm going to be broadcasting audio only Revolution Radio Studio A, freedomslips.com. We're going to talk about the Grand Solar Minimum and three typhoons, Western Pacific. I'm going to start you right here with the Himwari 8 from the Taiwan and the JMA. Typhoon tracking centers. The first of the typhoons just landed over the Korean Peninsula. Two more to go. And you can see over the next few hours, Typhoon Likima is going to skirt northern Taiwan. They're predicting the eye to be about 40 miles north of where I live. So I'm going to go out onto the balcony and broadcast live as this thing passes through in the morning. I'm going to try to protect myself on the lee side of the landfall. So once the back-end wind starts, I'm going to stop the broadcast and then try to get myself to safety. But you can see how the three typhoons here, very unusual. But landfall's already been made in the Korean Peninsula. And the two other bundles of energy keep on spinning. And what's most interesting is the typhoons approaching Taiwan, 6.0 earthquake, possibly an underwater volcanic eruption. Red star there, Ilan, east coast of Taiwan. Notice the coordinates, 24 north, 121 east. But as always, USGS is going to downgrade that under a 6. We wouldn't want to show a pattern with the uptick of the grand solar minimum, now would we? Other agencies putting it at 6.4, but the Taiwan Geological Survey putting it at 6.0, 5.30 shaking. You know, from my personal experience of when the 6.4 occurred down in Hualien. That was much more powerful as dishes fell off my shelves, glasses shattered across my kitchen. This one, even though it woke me up, I was waiting for the sounds of shattering glass, but it didn't happen. So it wasn't as powerful as the one that toppled buildings in Hualien last year. But the coordinates are incredibly interesting here. We got 24 degrees, 42 minutes north, and 121 degrees, 91 east. And then look right where the volcano is, 24 degrees, 50 minutes north. That's seven miles difference. And 121.90 versus 121.57 is just around 30 miles. So triangulating that in there, it was a sliver to the south and a little bit to the east. And we are literally talking seven miles south of this volcano. It's a well-known mud volcano. People go out there on the weekends, you can take a boat out there, put up your drone, and this is what the cliffs look like. This is what is ongoing. Mud volcano eruption, although there are interruptions in silent periods, but this is what people are seeing continuously, right near that exact same island. It is the top of a stratovolcano. 1800s, they talk about this thing erupting, covering ships with ash across the sails. But this is truly what it looks like, ongoing mud volcano, but this seemed to be far greater than what we see right here in this image. If we're looking at a 6.0 earthquake under the same exact area, that was an underwater eruption. So what I did is I instantly jumped on to the Jiaoqi webcam there to see if there would be any emanations out of the ocean coming up, steam clouds, volcanic ash. But with the typhoon inbound, that mass of clouds out there, even if there were something off the ocean, would be very difficult to discern that. Need to put some feelers out and try to talk to some fishermen, see what happened there. Obviously, there'd be an enormous amount of dead fish, but all the boats have been recalled in because of the typhoon, so nobody's out in the waters to kind of verify what has happened or not. The Taiwan government's very cautious about letting fishermen, surfers, watercraft go out. And even this morning, there was already 10-foot waves smashing on the beach over there, so a lot of people were not going out, and the beaches are closed. It is a code red, nobody on the beaches, Surfers, too bad. You're not going to get out there. Plus, the wind's terrible. It's onshore. Just slop. But when we look at the same time, 
5.30 a.m., about 15 minutes before the quake, is it an Earth-spot connection? Looking at the ionosphere charge here, nothing really directly over Taiwan, but the boundary edge between higher and lower charge is right, eh, I don't know, that's very sketchy to say something's electrically connected from the ionosphere directly. The sun, Earth spot connection, we got a typhoon amplifying, definitely electrical activity there. Got the earthquakes in the same exact areas, and there's three typhoons at the same time. So electrically, yeah, it matches up. Volcanic eruption underwater, nobody wants to admit that. That's scary for tourists. But whatever's going on, these two events within 12 hours of each other, eh, a little unusual. Take it for what you think it's worth. But it just makes you think about in these times, how prepared are you for emergencies? So today I went out and bought an enormous amount of supplies for this typhoon. They're expecting feet of rain, electrical disruptions. Going to some of the supermarkets around here, all the fresh vegetables are gone. The meat's gone. What was interesting is the mushrooms are left on the shelf, but nothing else. All the other vegetables are bought out. Food is a very important thing for emergencies, but how prepared are you? We're going into this grand solar minimum. I live in a typhoon and an earthquake zone, both of which happen in a single day today. I'm glad I'm prepared. I have seeds for sprouting. I have an enormous amount of things, so I know I'm safe. I didn't even panic. I am totally ready for these types of situations unless my building falls down. But how about you with the grand solar minimum? My Patriot Supply, long-term food storage, two-week grab-and-go food crate, 92 servings or the four-week food supply, 252 servings. The link's in the description box below. Prepare with ADAPT 2030. And I'll see you next video.